Hello. Everyone to the right. Everyone to the left. May I have your attention, please? Right in the middle. Thank you. I'm going to pass the mic to Miss Josie. I want her on my team. All right. My name is Josie Wilson. I'm the vice president. time to be together as Democrats moving forward. I want to, before we officially begin, I want to acknowledge that this event is on the Aboriginal lands of the Olami and Rumson ancestors. We continue to hold this awareness as we work within the Democratic Party to honor indigenous wisdom and work to build a more equitable country. In this vein, the DWMC vision is to inspire and empower all women as, as architects of equity and progressive social change. As a volunteer organization, our mission is to create opportunities for our members to interact, to participate, and to educate our community on key political and social issues. We champion democratic candidates and causes with an emphasis on women and gender equity as women in leadership have never been more critical than today. The DWMC is absolutely committed to strengthening our democratic presence in all elected positions it is for this reason we gather together this evening. I'd like to welcome, have you welcome Lisa Berkeley, our president of DWC, to the podium for a minute. So before we begin our meal, although I see many of us have already started our salad, we would like to take a moment to welcome the chef of bayonet and the black horse, Chef Wow, oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, this is, this is Chef Caleb Baker. Chef Caleb is a graduate of the German Culinary Academy of Rangers Yellow. to work with us and honor the theme of sustainability has created an exquisite, sustainable, and locally sourced meal from the charcuterie boards to the dessert. And we're going to let him tell you about tonight's meal. Chef Caleb, thank you for all you've done for us and welcome. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. How's it going? Well. Hello. So, um, Super happy, happy to have everybody tonight. Uh, and super happy to be cooking for, for everyone. Uh, and yes, I'm very happy to be saying that we uh, prepared something uh, sustainable for you guys and locally sourced, um, whether it be the, uh, the charcuterie from uh, Journeyman uh, Salami Company, and that's uh, from Sonoma. Uh, the, uh, the small... Uh, which uh, I use uh, duck eggs from uh, Bila Forte. As well as the honeycomb uh, on the charcuterie board as well. Um, and then we have the, uh, the spade and plow uh, local produce used on the, uh, the salad, the rock cod, locally sourced, and that's Monterey Bay State Food Watch approved. Um, what else? We got the cabbage, cabbage from uh, the local farmers market. I mean, everything. We just took a lot of care to make sure that we were getting um, from local sources and supporting our local businesses and our local farmers, um, and delivering it right from uh, <coughs> local markets to your guys' plates. So, um, that, all that makes me super happy, and I'm really um, excited that you guys are going to be able to enjoy that. 
uh, as a part of our meal. So, again, very, very happy to be cooking for you guys tonight. So, enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, with that in mind, I'm going to invite you to celebrate and enjoy your delicious meal, and I shall be back in a little while. Thank you. So, hello again, and welcome. I'm so excited and grateful to be here with everyone this evening. We have close to 200 people here with us, which is more than we have ever had at our sustainability event. It's an absolute testimony to how ready and engaged and engaged we are for this upcoming election. And, and when I look around this room and see some of the original DWMC members, Chris Walton, Carol Church, Mary Ann Teed, did I miss anyone? I see. I can't, I, okay, my glasses, I need the glasses. Who am I missing? Suzanne, oh, thank you, welcome, thank you. Um, who would have thought that you, with all of the, the ground that you laid for us, that we would be here today, that with our hard work, we are, God willing, about to have a woman for a president. <laughs> video that we sent about putting a woman in charge, and if not, look out for your old DWMC emails. Okay, so this evening could not have come to fruition without my sister DWMC board members who are here this evening. And if you could please stand as I call your name, and if folks could please hold your applause, hold your comments. Okay? <laughs> Josie Wilson, Margie Kay, Frederica Jones, Nicole Hollingsworth, Chris Walton, Monica Andrade, Isara Aragon, and Megan Wilden. Now, we also, we also have, don't want to forget our four, four board members who could not be with us. Mayor of Soledad Ana Velasquez, Vice Mayor of Monterey, Dr. Kim Barber, Laura Appleheider, and Julie Guest. We would also We'd also like to um, give a special shout out to the master of our money management, our bookkeeper Beatrice Bernard, and also DWMC this year has moved into a, a growth phase. Um, with the help of Holly Carlin as well, who has served in helping us learn the filing ropes for our newly acquired FEC status. So that was a big applause for me. For me, in many ways, the relationship with this group of outstanding women and I reflects the African philosophy of Ubuntu. I am because we are. And indeed, we work better when we work together. In addition, I'd like to thank our, our uh, sponsors. We could not have done this without your generosity. The list is far too long to go through, um, but you will see we have on the boards here and also in the front door both our in sponsors who have donated so generously, both in kind and through financial support. We could not have done this without you, and thank you. I'd also like to recognize the many public officials who are here with us this evening. Again, if you could please stand, and again, if we could hold our applause until the end, that would be great. Okay, former California controller, the current vice chair of the California Democratic Party, and gubernatorial candidate, Betty Yee. Okay, retired Senator Bill Monning. Bill. Senator, no, hold your, please hold your applause. No, I know it's hard. Okay, there we go, there we go. Um, Senator John Laird. California 
Coastal Commissioner Annie Nottoff, Sheriff Tina Nieto, Supervisor Glenn Church, Supervisor elect Kate Daniels, Monterey County Democratic Party Chair Karen Araujo, Carmel by the Sea Mayor Dave Potter, Marina Council Member Jenny McAdams, Marina Council Member Brian McCarthy, Monterey Mayor Tyler Williamson, Monterey Council Member Gino Garcia, Seaside Mayor Egan Ian Oglesby, Seaside Council Member Babe Dave Pacheco, Soledad Council Member Fernando Cabrera, Soledad Council Member Eva Banaros, Banaros, Monterey Peninsula College Trustee Area 1, Rosalind Green. Monterey Peninsula College Trustee Area 2, Yuri Anderson. Pacific Grove Unified School Board Trustee Carolyn Swanson. Cypress Fire Protection District Board Member Ali Edwards. Monterey Peninsula Water Management District Director Karen Paul. Marina Coast Water District Board President Gail Morton. Marina Coast Water District Board Vice President Jan Schreiner. Now, there may have been more folks who came into the room. Did I miss you? Because Chief Fire you City school. Council, Rita Burke. Thank you. Thank you. Rita Burke. Thank you. Please stand as well. Anybody else? George. Is George here? Yes. He's way oh, here. Hi, George. Where are you? George is Monterey Peninsula Water Management District Director, George Riley. Lisa. Yes. I see the... There's a woman right here at the table. Mary Claypool. Mary Claypool. Yes. Mary Claypool. Mary Claypool. Oh, Mary Claypool, Monterey Board of Education. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? It is so amazing. Thank you all. Thank you for your time and most importantly for your service to our community and thank you for being with us tonight. I know how hard you all work. Thank you. So we also, as DWFC promotes and supports Democratic candidates, I know there are a number of people who are running for office in this room and I'm not going to list them because I don't want to out anybody, but I'm going to invite them to just go ahead and stand so people can see who you are if you are running. <laughs> and talk with them, get to know them, and get involved with their campaigns and support democracy here at the local level. Because, as our name indicates this evening, democracy begins with you, democracy depends on you, on all of us. So thank you for those who are about to be elected, I hope, and uh, thank you for being with us this evening. Okay, so... Activist Abby Hoffman once said, democracy is not something you believe in or a place to hang your hat, but it's something you do. You participate. If you stop doing it, democracy crumbles. This year's theme, Democracy Depends on You, is a call to action. With the threat of another Donald Trump presidency and Project 2025 looming on the horizon, we must draw on the wisdom of history as well as our own power to create change. History has shown us that when social systems begin to fail, it is those who are most underserved, who are vulnerable, and most at risk. To protect their rights requires all of us to participate, to learn and educate, and ultimately to vote. In a recent LA Times piece, writer Anita Chabria reminded us that democracy only works if it protects everyone. Tonight, we also recognize that when our democracy fails us, we rely on leaders who are in the trenches doing the work to ensure everyone has freedom and a voice, and where their basic human rights, from shelter to health care, to food and clean drinking water, are met. Tonight's honorees, Dr. Dana Kent, MD, and Chelsea Tu, have worked with steadfast determination and commitment to care for and ensure that people in the most tenuous situations basic needs are met. 
This evening, we're thrilled to present them with our 2024 awards, as well as acknowledgments from both the county and the state. Sorry, I'm watching beautiful people coming to you. This year's DWMC Visionary Leader Award is Dr. Dana Kent, MD. have to share a brief story. <laughs> I was a full-grown adult when I went back to school to get my master's degree at what was then the Monterey Institute of International Studies. Senator Bill Wanning was, at the time, a mere Professor Wanning, and was one of my mentors. One day, I went to his office feeling like a fish out of water, surrounded by all these young people, these driven whippersnappers, while while they held on to hope and vision, I felt like I had wisdom and experience, but not that same kind of drive, and I had no idea what my future was going to hold. Professor Moni asked me if I knew my passion. What did I care about deeply? And we had a conversation about a shared commitment to making the world a better place. I still get emotional when I think about it. I was still, though, a bit skeptical, and that then he shared with me the story of his wife, medical doctor Dana Kent. He shared how she was driven by her passion and the calling to be of service, and how, as an adult and a mother of two in that, she was driven to go to medical school. And then he shared how she made such a difference in the lives of so many people, all because she listened to her passion, her calling, she listened to the way of heart. So it is now my great pleasure to introduce you to this outstanding woman who has until now been my very secret hero, Dr. Dana Kent. Let me tell you, and let me tell you a little bit about her, let's hear a little bit more of the academic east side here. Dr. Dana Kent received a bachelor's in philosophy from Radcliffe College, Harvard University, and an RN degree from Hartnell College. She returned to school at Harvard Medical School at age 34 with two young children, as I just showed. And she completed her residency program in family medicine at Natividad, where she was co-chief resident. She first became involved in progressive causes in high school in the late 1960s. And after college, before nursing and medical schools, she worked for the United Farm Workers Union, UFW, for three years. She met her future husband, Senator Bill Monty, retired, on Gabriel Street in Salinas in 1976. I'm sure there's a great story there. In the early 1980s, in response to the increasing number of Salvadorian refugees and their needs, Dana co-founded the Salvadorian Medical Relief Fund. Also, in the early 1980s, after a mass pesticide poisoning incident, Dana volunteered as an interpreter at what would become the Monterey County Pesticide Coalition. After finishing her residency, Dana spent her clinical career as a family doctor at Natividad in Salinas and at Monterey County Health Department's clinics in Marina and Seaside. At that time, she also worked in indigenous communities in Chavez, Mexico during the cholera epidemic. Dana spent the last 10 years of her professional career at Natividad Foundation with a focus on disease prevention in the underserved population. She co-created and co-directed Five Steps to Prevent Diabetes, an evidence-based program located in community sites throughout Monterey County. Dana was also medical director of Natividad's Diabetes Education Center, and she and her husband Bill live in Monterey County, and they have two adult daughters and three grandchildren, one of whom was able to surprise her nanny by being here today. Welcome, Shay. In support of, lastly, in support of keeping democratic values and electeds in office, Dana currently volunteers with Swing Left. It is my tremendous pleasure to introduce you to my Shiro. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Dana Kent to the podium.
Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Lovely introduction. And thank you, thanks to all of you here today. I am just so enormously honored by this award. Thanks especially to the DWMC, to its board and the organizing committee, to the sponsors, elected officials, and their staffs, to the candidates, and to friends and former colleagues. Thank you to the Bayonet and Black Horse workers, working hard. Yes. <laughs> and thank you to all allies and women. Above all, thank you to my family. First and foremost, to my husband, Belmani, to our daughters, Laura and Lexi, and Laura and our granddaughter, Shay, are here with us from Oakland today. Without their support and tolerance, I would not be standing here. And to my late parents, who instilled values and an ethical code in my sisters and me. Congratulations to my co-honoree, Chelsea Chu. I'm a great admirer of Monterey Waterkeeper's important work at Chelsea's leadership. I'm honored to be recognized with Chelsea. I was reviewing DWMC's vision and mission statements, which are just terrific. They emphasize empowerment of women as architects of equity and progressive social change, the championing of democratic candidates and causes, and the critical role of women in leadership. The mission statement also focuses on women and gender equity. As we all know, women's reproductive rights are under attack in the U.S. As a doctor, I know it's critical to support women's reproductive freedoms and health, now more than ever. I also feel it's time for the U.S. to join most other so-called developed nations and move to a single-payer healthcare system. Ensuring access to health care for all. I want to spend just a minute addressing women in leadership. Especially for the younger people here, I have an anecdote from my college time. When I started college in 1970, there was a fixed ratio of men to women of four to one. Many of us fought for equal admissions. One male alumnus protested that the purpose of Harvard is to create leaders, obviously implying that women and fewer, more women and fewer men were admitted, fewer leaders would emerge. When I graduated, the ratio was down to 2.5 to 1. Now it's equal, but that didn't happen spontaneously. It took a struggle. Many studies show that diverse teams work better. Teams with women, people of color, and LGBTQ plus members fuel innovation and increase complex problem solving. We remember the financial crash of 2008. The country of Iceland was hit hard, and according to the Guardian newspaper, its financial institutions have been headed by, quote, buccaneers, reckless and overwhelmingly male, end quote. It was women who led the rescue, with women capital founders teaming up with the singer Bjork to set up an investment fund with a more balanced profile. The International Monetary Fund stated that Iceland had rebounded with a strong recovery by March 2015. So these are turbulent and difficult times. We're fortunate in Monterey County to have the elected officials we do, including many women and people of color. And we've worked hard to elect them. I thank them for serving. I know it's such hard work, especially in this era. And many of us have felt anxious recently. But as Swing Left says, let's turn anxiety into activism. So let's support the DWMC to put more women and more young non-traditional activists into leadership and into office to represent us. So once again, thank you so much and adelante.
also from the Thank you very much, Dr. Kennedy. It's an honor to We also have from the supervisors from the County of Monterey. Thank you. I know she was so shy, and that's okay, we, and I just really appreciate, once again, your courage and willingness to receive our award and the recommendation from the community. Okay, it's now, it's now my honor to introduce you to our next awardee, our DWMC 2024 Emergent Leader, Chelsea Singh Feng Tu. Or as many of us know her as Chelsea Teary. Similar to Dana, Chelsea is someone who, by listening to the call of her heart, has transformed her passion to service. A deeply humble person, Chelsea's vision and commitment as the executive director of Monterey Waterkeeper is to ensure safe drinking water and coastal access for all communities. Prior to her work at Monterey Waterkeeper, Ms. Tu worked as a senior attorney at the Center on Race, Poverty, and the Environment. She also led climate justice advocacy and public advocates and worked to protect freshwater resources, curb sprawl, and reduce toxins and pesticides at the Center for of Biological Diversity. Chelsea also teaches at the Environmental Justice, Race Class, and the Environment Course at UC Berkeley School of Law. I've had the brief honor of getting to know her. Brief honor, I said all that means. I've had, the, I've had the honor of getting to know her for a very brief period of time, but I have found her to be an absolute gem to our community and a real gift to us here in Monterey County. So it's with my great pleasure to introduce you. And please join me in welcoming Chelsea Tu to the program. Honored 
to be selected to receive this honor, especially alongside the great Dr. Kent. It's, it's almost unfair, but I'll do my best <laughs> uh, following uh, just your, your amazing presentation. And Dr. Kent, you and Senator Ramani, you are my role models here in Monterey County. You're my North Star. And whenever I feel um, this just scared or not knowing what to do, I always think of the coffee that we had at um, Senator Ramani in the beginning when Monterey Waterkeeper first began with very little money and um, you know, we're still in the middle of priority setting 2022. And, I, I frankly just told out I had no idea what I was doing and you comforted me. So I always think back on that moment and I will always work to be a little bit more like you all and shine like both of you. Um, and everyone here today as well. So going back to my grandparents, when I was a teenager, my grandfather told me to be a woman leader. And at that time, I had no idea what being a leader or what being a woman leader meant. So, but because I'm named New Phoenix, which is a, a, a pretty legendary name, I spent the last 20 years figuring out how to live up to my name. Um, figuring out what leadership means for me. And uh, to me, being a leader really starts with living my personal values. And among other values, my personal values are equity, agency, and well-being. I believe that all people, including low-income people, people of color, people who look like me and have similar backgrounds to my family growing up, um, we all deserve and have the right to thrive in a healthy environment. And so, it's with this belief and with the privileges that I've gotten to enjoy that I've been able to practice living my values every day in a personal capacity as well as through my work with Monterey Waterkeeper. Um, so, in March, Monterey Waterkeeper and our many allies filed a civil rights complaint against the State Water Board. Um, and this was with the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. So we let the EPA know that our state, uh, for, for its many qualities, is unfortunately failing to regulate fertilizer nitrate pollution in our community. And that this failure is disproportionately harming the health and the lives of communities of color and low-income communities in the Central Coast region, our region. So we were able to show through a civil rights complaint uh, by researching groundwater wells and where they're located and how much nitrate they have that Latinx communities in the Central Coast region are 4.4 times more likely to drink water that is contaminated with toxic levels of nitrate. And if you haven't heard about how deadly nitrate is, and if your infant is exposed to nitrate water for a brief period of time, it can cause your infant to not have enough oxygen in their bloodstream and the infant might die. So nitrate is deadly and it can also cause different kinds of cancer uh, in adults uh, and it's also associated with thyroid disease. So we have a nitrate health crisis, an environmental crisis happening right here in the Central Coast in other agriculturally intensive areas like the Central Valley as well. So this is a statewide problem. Um, additionally, we show that low-income areas in the Central Coast um, with high uh, percentages of poverty over 50% are 2.3 times more likely to drink nitrate contaminated water than higher income communities. So we are talking about the nitrate health crisis hitting our frontline communities, our underserved communities, low income communities, and communities of color, many times over white communities or wealthier communities. And this is an injustice and it's an inequity that has been playing out and it's growing in the Central Coast region. 
Um, but I don't want to scare you too much, but I did want to lay out the realities of the nitrate health crisis. And Monterey Waterkeeper and our allies are, and some of you in this room, we're doing something about it. So, as a result, As a result of our civil rights complaint to the US EPA on the state's inaction to regulate nitrate pollution, Monterey Waterkeeper is now in the beginning stages of working with the US EPA to hopefully bring federal resources to assist families in getting bottled water and connecting to communities with better treatment systems all over the Central Coast. Um, but we all know and I want to underscore this, that mitigation is not equity. And I will not stop fighting alongside communities until the state actually addresses the root cause, the source of the problem, which is fertilizer overuse. And some amount of fertilizer is important to produce our vegetables, but we've been applying too much fertilizer for too many decades. And the symptoms and the costs are showing up in people's bloodstreams, um, impacting their health um, and causing death. So the state can do something about the nitrate crisis. And they can do that by placing fertilizer overuse and runoff limitations, not just for our re region, because as I mentioned, the Central Valley is facing similar, if not worse, nitrate crisis. But the state can do that for the state, for uh, the entire state, and benefit all Californians. So the more I fight for equity, the more I realize that it does take all of us to achieve it, including every single person in this room. And it's not just because advancing equity is hard, because we all know that it's hard. Um, it's because all of our lives are intertwined, and our well-being depends on the well-being of everyone else. And, uh, should I wrap up your vision? <laughs> I'm almost done. my last day. This has just been the best. I've spoken with, uh, at DWC before, and she really kept me grounded, so I really appreciate her presence. <laughs> um, so, water is perhaps uh, the most important physical connector of our lives. Um, but if we don't all pitch in to stop the nitrate pollution crisis now, or water pollution in general, all of our interconnected waterways and groundwater resources will eventually be untreatable and unswimmable. But if we address the root cause now by limiting nitrate and other types of water pollution, we can ensure that our children and grandchildren and future generations have safe drinking water and clean rivers and oceans to swim in. So I hope that you'll join me and Monterey Waterkeeper in this fight for equity. Because when we fight for the well-being of the underserved, we fight for the well-being of everyone. And everyone has the capacity to lead. So finally, I hope that as you lead, that you'll always remember this. Believe in good and act with love. Believe in good and act with love. So no matter what you are passionate about, no matter what personal challenges you're facing, and let's face it, we're all facing personal challenges at any given time. So no matter that, uh, and no matter, and maybe especially um, in times of turmoil um, that our democracy might be facing, believe that goodness, your individual goodness, as well as the goodness of the collective, of everyone, will prevail. And all we have to do to ensure that goodness will shine is to do everything with love. And each act of love, whether small or big, can transform our interconnected world. So, 
I'll end with that. I hope that I have the privilege to continue sharing my love and my gratitude for you um, and this beloved community for many years to come. And thank you so much again for this talk. We have for you also, we have for you the State Legislative Award from California. And we have the Monterey County Board of Supervisors recognition as well. And the Congressional Award as well. Does you want to get in this picture? And then of course we have our DWMC Award, which is... Obstacles. May we all continue to do things with love and see the opportunities for growth and change and making the world a better place. So, again, I'd like to say congratulations to our outstanding DWMC 2024 awardees. It's now time for our auction. Please keep in mind that all money from today's auction goes directly to support the work of DWMC and our local Democratic candidates. So please get your checkbooks and your credit cards and your cash ready. We are excited to have Senator John Laird as our auctioneer. Senator Laird's dedication to the DWMC has been unshakable. From sharing his state to the state, to working with us at our galas, he is a strong supporter of women candidates and we are proud to have him on our side. Senator Laird, please join me at the podium and thank you for being with us. And what Lisa just said is the real thing. We can't do the money that goes to campaigns and goes to voter registration and lifts up almost entirely women in the Monterey Peninsula comes from events like this and comes from the auction. And you could go out and buy some of this stuff, and you will, because it's valuable. You'll see amazing mixes. But in this case, you spend the same amount of money, and you help voter registration, and people get out the vote, and elect people that might not be as good as fundraising as others get to elected office in the Monterey Peninsula. So, and the entire county, the entire and it costs money to, to bring scholarships to lunch, to put on the lunches for the program. Would anybody like We're starting a fellowship program for the youth so we can get the next generation of young women and men, or anybody who's non-gender identified, in support of civic engagement. And we're starting this in the fall. So we hope to contribute to that as well. Tonight, this has been an amazingly successful auction and bidding afterwards. Thank you all for participating. And important parts of the evening. What happens when you walk out the door? What can you actually do to support democracy and to support getting soon to be hopeful President Kamala Harris? <laughs> working with us in DWMC and coming to our events, which I'll discuss in a little, little bit, um, we are very excited to have two people with us who can guide us on ways that you can help save our democracy. I would like to invite Betty Yee, Vice Chair of the California Democratic Party and former California Controller and Gubernatorial Candidate, 
and Stephanie Dominguez Walton of Planned Parenthood Mar Monte to come to the podium to share ways that you can protect our freedom, our choice, and our democracy. So Betty, if we can start with you, we would love to hear your voice. Responsibility. Not just because we want to send our daughter of California, Kamala Harris, to the White House, but because we have so much that we have accomplished here that we need to protect. And everyone looks to California as the model. Whether it's the strongest reproductive rights that we have here in California, and frankly, we welcome women from all over the country to enjoy here in California whether it's the strongest environmental protection laws that we have here in California, the strongest gun safety laws that we have here in California, and the fact that we are so fortunate to wake up every single day and feel blessed that we can say that we celebrate our diversity and it is really our greatest strength. And so we know what we have to do in these next 100 days because we have done it before. So we have to double down because I'm gonna ask each of you, as you wake up each day for the next couple of months, think about one more thing that you can do with your time. And right now in California, in this election cycle, we are a battleground. We have six targeted congressional seats that we can flip. And what I'm gonna ask you to do is you can phone bank, you can text bank, you can go on the Kadem.org website and look at how we are organizing all of our activities every single weekend, and even during the week, to flip our congressional seats. And this is why it's important, because when President Harris takes office, let me just say, Project 2025 is not going away. This is now the agenda of the far right, printed in black and white. And our former president can disavow any association with it, with it but frankly, he wrote the playbook for it. And what is dangerous about Project 2025 is not that, and we know this because we always are fighting for our rights, we never take them for granted here in California, but for other states that don't have the capacity, we need to be there for them. For communities that really have not their voice developed fully yet about protecting their own rights, we need to stand up for them. But also, when I think about what is at stake with Project 2025, our democracy is truly at stake. This is a playbook for how to infiltrate the federal government with far-right conservative thought that discounts science, that discounts data, that discounts anyone that doesn't look like the architects of this plan. And so this is what we are fighting this cycle. And so what I'm gonna ask each of you to do, please, please, Think about what one thing more you can do each day. And when I think about these 100 days, I think about them in little buckets. One is, we each get prepared. We each get prepared. We know that we are ready, we know how we're gonna vote, and we have the information about what's at stake that we can communicate. The second thing is, how do we empower our communities around us? Community, however you define community. And third, what we need to do is to be sure that we don't forget the progress that we have made. And I want to just take this opportunity publicly to just say thank you, President Biden, for passing on the torch. For handing us a torch that we will continue to keep ignited to make progress, and for handing us a torch that makes it possible for us to see the first woman president of the United States. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so that, let me please introduce to you. Thank you, Vice Chair Yee, and I want to say congratulations to the honorees for all your amazing work. And I just want to start by saying, what a week we've had! And what an amazing time it is to be a Democrat and a Democratic 
woman. Yes! We know that when women lead and women organize, there is nothing that can stop us. And this enthusiasm and excitement just keeps building. And it's just really an honor to be here. And thank you so much. I'm Stephanie Dominguez Wall, and I'm the Director of Leadership Giving at Planned Parenthood Marmonte. We are the largest affiliate in the country, 42 counties across mid-California and northern Nevada, and I'm here today on behalf of our electoral arm, Planned Parenthood Advocates Marmonte. And so I want to tell you about some opportunities we have, given that we have enshrined uh, the right to a safe legal abortion and birth control in this state, California. Now we've got to do it in Nevada. And when abortion is on the ballot, democracy wins, we know this. So it's easy to do the math. Uh, we got to get some turnout. So here's what's going on. Um, this November, Nevadans have an opportunity to affirm the right to abortion in their state constitution, providing much needed certainty in an uncertain political landscape. The measure, oh, by the way, you can see I put a nice large QR code you can take a photo of it, and you can donate. We're trying to raise 16 million bucks, okay? We've got to get the word out. I'm going off script, but I know it's like the back of my hand. It's, it's so important. And um, just a little bit about the coalition that has come together. We are helping the campaign, Nevadans for Reproductive Freedom, to raise this money because we need the turnout because there's so much at stake in the, in the state of Nevada. we got to go blue in Nevada all the way up and down yeah, the ballot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this measure, in addition to enshrining um, uh, safe legal abortion into the Constitution, it will increase access to care by getting rid of the physician-only requirement in that state. And that means that advanced practitioners can perform safe legal in-clinic abortions not just when the doctor's in, but every day that we're open. And that increases care, because since, since Roe fell, since the Dobbs decision came across and, and ruined us for a while, it's, it's, it's still tough to talk about, because what we saw was not only the need to provide for the patients that come to us in our own um, region, but we saw patients from 36 states across the country coming for care in, in our health centers. So it's critically important that we, we pass this in Nevada. Um, as I already said, abortion's on the ballot, democracy wins, but it never hurts to reinforce. Um, my mom used to always say to me, give me my right to vote and give me agency over my own body, and everything else flows from that. And we can turn communities into vibrant, incredible, productive, just bastions of opportunity when we give people the right to choose and when we give people the right to exercise their vote. Um, what we're doing now is asking folks who can, and I'm sure you're getting hit up for money all the time, but if this is something you'd like to do, sometimes it's a donation, and that goes straight to the campaign, which gets people knocking doors and in front of, of voters, and also um, with marketing materials that are so critical because we have to spread the word. But you can also join us the last three weekends in October, pick a weekend. This region's going to be out in full force the first weekend of our efforts, which is October 11th. Don and I will be there the 11th. Yes, so yes if you can. All you got to do is get yourself to Reno. We will put you up, we will feed you, we will train you, and we will give you addresses, and we put on our big warm jackets, and we hit those doors, and we get people out to the polls to vote for abortion rights, freedom, ending that physician-only requirement, and you know what else they're going to do. Kamala Harris! Thank you! You can say it right here! You can say it right here! Okay, okay. Um, I'm not even looking at this script, so I'm just going to go with... You've got the, you know, you understand the assignment. That's something that people are saying now. We understand the assignment. And it's not just for us, and it's not just for the people before us. You know, my mom was in the streets in the 70s fighting for these things, and she is gone now, but it is incumbent on me and, and, and all of us here in this room to make sure that we provide for people today and we provide for future generations. Oh my gosh, I've never been so excited to vote in my life! Okay, I'm here. I've got business cards, I've got sign-up sheets. If you want to get the QR codes, great. If you want to donate, thank you. If you want to show up, thank you. We are, we are stronger together, alright? And remember that, 
It's women leading, and we will get this done! Yeah. So, so, so exciting. Wow, I was going to be joining us in the walk for Planned Parenthood. I hope you all got those QR codes. We'll also have further more information both on how we can fight Project 2025 as well as how we can get engaged to protect our reproductive rights at an activism table at the front, and these two boards will also be there in case you miss them. So, thank you Betty for sharing that with us, and thank you Stephanie. The DWMC is also so actively engaged with providing opportunities to get involved in California and beyond. On our website, under which is dw-mc.org, under volunteer opportunities, we have the information regarding working with Planned Parenthood Monte to protect a woman's right to choose in Nevada and Arizona, as well as ways that you can get involved in the comfort from your own home, including Swing Left and other things, other um, organizations where you can write postcards and such. So also, please keep your eyes open for our emails. In the next few weeks, we will have information about our youth fellowship opportunities, as was mentioned a little bit before, and upcoming events and trainings, and as well, our local endorsement process. Um, if you are not already a member, or if you are a member, please confirm your membership. You must be a member for at least one month, at least 30 days, to vote in our endorsement process. Our endorsements, DWMC gives our endorsements to local political candidates based on our members' votes. We put out videos, we, we do a forums, we do all kinds of information to get you the information, but ultimately you do the voting and you must be a member for more than a month. So again, please be sure to go online and be sure your membership is current. So, now, more than ever, it's time to take action because, as this evening's theme suggests, democracy depends on you, democracy depends on all of us. I want to thank you for being with us this evening and for your ongoing support. And okay, so it's good. I hope you're sitting at tables with friends, and if they're not friends, let them become your friends. And please, may we all work together to support democracy. I wish you all a good evening. Please, if you um, think or purchase anything or would like to make a donation, you can check out at our checkout registration. And I wish you all a good night, and may you get home safely. Thank you so much.